Good evening. Tonight we're going to look at how to use the updated version of GitHub on Windows as well as syncing it with a Mac project so we can get the information so we can transfer a C++ project from one machine to another. So as you can see right here, we're inside my workspace. And we have in this one, we have our first CPP file. If we take a look inside GitHub Desktop, as you can see, I have that repository already listed right here. We've got our changes ready to go. We had our base commit, we had our get attributes. I'm going to go ahead and hit publish on this so I can add the information. Giving it a name, it's something that I can easily see and recognize. In this case, it's first CPP. I'm going to go ahead and publish it to my regular GitHub repo and just click publish. That's going to put it up onto our GitHub repository. As you can see, it's been published right now. We've got that ready to go. As you can see, we had that first CPP was just updated 36 seconds ago. So that just got updated right into the project. So it's clearly right here on the screen. We've now gone over and switched to the MacBook, so we can take a look at the same repository we just made inside there. We're taking and looking at it now on our GitHub repository. We go ahead and clone that from the repository, and we want to sync that. We're going to move it into the grading repo, so we can move that workspace and put it there. We choose that. We choose the clone option. After we've hit the clone option, we've got it right there. We can see we have all those lovely commits we just made. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to switch back into Eclipse so we can import the project appropriately. Once we're in Eclipse, what we need to do is we just go ahead and click on right click, choose import. We then choose general and existing project in the workspace. Choose next again. Then we browse for our root directory. We're going to choose that grading workspace we've already just used from our documents folder. I go into there. And when I select the grading workspace, as you can see, that first CPP is listed. And we have some other projects that we have. We're going to uncheck those because we don't need to worry about them right now. So we'll click on those two to uncheck them leaving the project we want to import selected, and then we hit finish. As you can see, we now have access to the code that we put in from there, and so we want to make some changes on that so we can see it reflected on the Windows box as well. So we're going to right click on there, choose File, go to New, and Other. And since we're doing C++ not Java, obviously we're going to switch to that area of the code, to go to the C slash C++ folder, go down, we're going to choose a source file, and choose Next. Then we're going to go ahead and give it a name of controller.cpp. We hit the finish button on that, making sure it's going, of course, inside the source folder for the project, matching that up appropriately. We hit finish. We're going to go ahead and add a start method for this, open and close some squiggles on that. And we're going to make this be part of a class. So we're going to go ahead and add the controller scope resolution indicator, knowing that it's going to be along with that. And as you can see, we've got a red line, so we have to actually go and specify the class it's going to go with. So we'll right-click on Source, go to New, go to Other again. This time we're going to go to CC++ and select the header file, and choose Next, and give it a name of controller.hpp. Now that we're inside the controller.hpp, we have our standard if and def define in def section. And we're going to go ahead in that location, we're going to go ahead and put in our class definition. So class controller, then open and close squiggles, followed by a semicolon, and hit Save. And we go to public section. And in that public section, we'll have a void start added to that as a prototype. We're going to go ahead and commit this into GitHub. And so as you can see, we made those changes of adding the controller.cpp and the controller.hpp. Give a commit message in here of adding code from the Mac. And choose commit to master. And we want to make sure we sync that as well. We're back here in the Windows box. As you can see, we had that original first update from eight minutes ago from first CPP. We're going to go ahead and refresh that page. And as you can see, there was an update just a minute ago. So we have that information we just grabbed from that. We'll go ahead and take a look at that here on GitHub. As you can see, we have three commits. Bring that down onto our GitHub application here on the Windows box. So we have up here, as you can see, I have not yet synced. So we're going to go ahead and over here on the sync settings, we're going to click on the sync. That'll pull that commit from that, which will update our history list right here. And so now we have those three commits that have been made two here on the Windows box and one from the Mac box. We have that added code from Mac. As you can see, I have that executable file right here, which is a binary file not shown, so I actually did not spell my debug folder properly. As you can see, it starts with a capital D inside the Windows box right there. So I'm going to go ahead and change my settings for that inside my repo settings. Let to make sure I update that. Over here in Get Desktop for Windows, that's done over here in the Tools and Options menu in the top right corner. Notice we do not have a drop-down menu on the top for the Windows version. We click on that setting, we go right here to the repo settings. On that ignored files, as you can see, I have my bin slash, my DS store, and thumbs dbx user data. I'm going to go ahead and add a debug slash. Make sure we include the debug folder as well. 
and go ahead and choose OK. That will add that so we will no longer add anything from that. And I can go ahead and remove that existing file from there as well. If we go ahead and look at the Eclipse folder right here, I click on the down triangle on that. And I go ahead and look inside my source folder. As you can see, I only see the first cpp.cpp file. Obviously, we need to go ahead and change that. So in order to fix that, we're going to right-click on the file for the project, right-click on that, and choose the Refresh option, or F5. And now, as you can see, we have that lovely set of information right here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that joyous? We have our .cpp for controller and our controller .hpp. So we have those header files and class file that we decided for that. So now that we've got that over there, we can go ahead and click on that so we can open it up. There's our header file. There's our lovely controller. And that looks great and wonderful. What we want to do, obviously, is we want to have the idea that we can take this information from here and bring it back onto that so we have that same process again. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's say what we're going to do this time is we're going to make a branch over here in the Windows box so we can have that happen and then bring it back into the project and merge as well. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to de um, GitHub. We have our desktop application right here. And we have, and the branch name is, uh, we're going to give it a really, really boring name at NBC. And it's from branching off of master. We're going to choose the option to create a new branch. And so we've made the branch right here. We haven't done any changes to our code yet, but we're just saying the idea that we have that updated get ignore. We have the fact that we're updating that branch right there. I'm going to go ahead and make that branch right here. So made new branch, new branch, and updated ignore file. So I made a new branch update ignore file for my commit message. I'm going to go ahead and commit to that branch that we're on right now. So that branch is right there. I'm going to go ahead and publish this branch because it has to be published automatically to the server as well. So we have access to that. This is where we're going to make our commits to. We are working right now on the add NBC branch. We're going to go ahead and pull this up, go back to that, and we're going to go into our source folder. On the source folder, we're going to right click on the source folder. We're going to go to new. We're going to add a new folder. And we're going to call this controller. So we have the idea of making that model view controller structure we've been using all year long. Choose finish. As you can see right now, I have that controller folder. I'm going to go ahead and click on these lovely three files right here. And I'm going to move them into the controller folder. So now we have the fact that these are in the folder. We can verify that they're actually inside the folder by going and clicking on this, right clicking on the folder itself, going down to the properties or alt and enter for that. And as you look at the actual path for that first cpp slash source slash controller, it has been updated into that. So we're going to go ahead and do that and choose OK. We've got that on there. We have our debug file for our actual first cpp.exe. We actually created that file that first worked and read that get ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that change that happened inside GitHub. As you can see right here, we have the removal of files. We have the removal from the source controller and source control HPP and the source first cpp. And the additional files right here into the controller subfolder into that. So we're gonna go ahead and get a nice little message for that for committing, excuse me, for updating folders. And choose commit to NBC. So we have that lovely commit right here. So we have that commit. We've got that right there. It's exactly where we wanna see it. And we can go ahead and we can even merge that right into it. So now I want to go ahead and sync that so my code is synced appropriately on the web. So I'm totally up to date. So I have my master path right here, as well as my AdMVC branch that I have branched off of that. We've synced that up. Once that's finished, we're good to go. So I, now I'm up to date on my sync. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to make sure I put that into the back into the master because we've got that ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and click on the AdMVC dropdown. We're going to choose the master branch so we can grab that. We're now inside the master branch. And we want to choose the option to merge that. So we're going to go ahead and go on here on the down triangle. And we want to choose the option of update from add MVC. So we're going to take that branch and merge it into it. As we hover over it, you can see the fact that there are two commits that need to be merged. We hover. As you can see, when we hover over that, we can see there's merged two commits from the add MVC branch into the master. So that's how we're going to bring something from our previous branch right back in. This works just like it does inside Java. In fact, the GitHub repository to the Git sequence 
works the same regardless of language or tool you're using. So we're going to go ahead and choose that as the option. So we're choosing update from and MVC. We're updating that to the master. So we have the master branch selected. We have the and MVCs we're updating from. And we're going to choose the option to update on that. We choose that update from add MVC. As you can see right here, we have now that then merge sequence right here. So we've merged from add VC. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I'm viewing my branch. So I'm going to view the uh, master right here. So if I look at my master branch right here, I can see my master branch was over here. I had the various commits, the add get attributes, base commit, then I have the actual code from the Mac, then I have my merge where I merge the branch into this using the Windows version of GitHub for desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and hit sync again so I can make sure all the changes are posted live onto the server. Again, syncing often is your friend, especially when you're using a Windows box because you have to manually sync this on your own as there is no auto sync for that. We're going to go ahead and verify that works. As we look at our GitHub for CPP um, repo, as you can see, there's been six total commits. There are two branches. We have the default branch was master. There's an active branch also of added MVC, so we can take a look at that. We can look at the master branch. As you can see right here, that we had the merge remote tracking branch remotes origin slash add MVC. So you add that branch right into the repo. We're going to go over and look at that on the Mac. We see that same approach over there. On this, we have our lovely little symbol right here for this to create a new branch. It's over in the top leftish section next to the keyword master. So we're going to click on the new branch option. We have made those changes on the Mac box earlier where we added some information to our start method. I'm going to go ahead and add some information to this so we can actually see what happens when we don't keep track of the syncs and have some problems happen where, where we have to actually do to fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and up here at the top of my file and do a pound include. And I'm going to do some quotes. And we're going to include the controller HPP, like we should, and we do a pound include, angle brackets, and IO stream. So we have access to the streams, and we do a pound include, and a using statement, namespace, std to implement. Pounding to use the standard library. So I have those lovely informations that I know I'm going to need access to so I can properly use those files. Go ahead and save that right here. I'm going to go back to GitHub inside the Mac box, excuse me, on, inside the PC. As you can see, there have been changes made to this. I'm on my master just like I was inside the Mac version. I'm going to go ahead and give a little summary message of saying that we have um, added include and using statements. and choose commit that to master. So I have that commit. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to try and hit sync within that. So we have all those commits. I'm going to go ahead and pull that information up inside my Eclipse line. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this lovely project. So in Eclipse, right click and choose refresh. As you can see on this, because there are none of the lines involved were actually changed. We didn't have any, um, any change on that, so it didn't actually cause an impact because we weren't doing anything that was causing a problem with that. So what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and comment this line out. Pound include on that. We're going to go ahead and hit save. So line 8 is synced. I'm going to go over to the Mac version. I'm going to make a change and a commit before I sync with this and how it's going to cause an impact on that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that. So we're going to make that change right here on one that's actually impacted. I'm going to go ahead and go over to my GitHub repository. I'm going to choose the option to sync within this. There's a sync. We're up to date. Everything's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and go on this. I'm going to right click on here and pull the refresh. As you can see, I've got that lovely refresh right and I'm going to go on line 8 and I'm making a change separate from this. I'm going to change this to .h instead of controller.hpp, like what we were using. We had that sync that was, that was already on there. I'm going to go ahead and save this commit right here with command s. I'm going to go ahead and go. We have that change right here where we have the change right there. It's clearly highlighted with a red 
line versus the green line where there's an actual change that's been affected on line eight. And so there's an actual difference between the two different lines. And so I have sinks happening right there where I change my include, gave an error. I go ahead and if I refresh on here, I go to GitHub Desktop, choose the sync option, making sure that is synced. Going back over to my version on Windows, syncing on that. Sync conflicts. Oh no, please resolve all conflicted files, commit and try syncing again. As you can see, we now have a problem with this. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. As you can see right here, we have that error happening right here on controller.cvp. It's causing a merge when we're trying to, on branch and the conflict is inside that. So we have to actually go see where that error is caused. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to Eclipse. We're gonna go ahead and right click on the project and choose refresh. As you can see right now, we have this lovely bit of angle brackets and then head, a set of equal sign, another set of angle brackets in Origin Master. And this is where we have the idea of a conflict. What Git does is it specifically march, <clears throat> what Git does is it specifically marks where that conflict is by giving a separation between the head and the equal sign and the equal sign and the angle bracket origin where the actual conflict is happening. And that's something we have to actually make sure we address within that. And so in this case, we already knew that we're causing an error with this. The controller.h is not what we really want. This is that later change that we made. This is not what we want. Generally, what we have from the equal sign down to the origin of the later commit, and from the equal sign up to the head is the older code. However, because that later stuff is actually wrong, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So what I have to do is I have to manually go through and delete all that entire line of the angle brackets and the associated branch that has the error with it. Again, take that whole line out, hit delete or backspace, take out this. I'm going to make sure I update this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and change that back to HPP. And then I also have to make sure I take out the equal sign up to and including all those angle brackets. If I don't take those all out, it's not going to compile. It's going to give me massive errors, and it's going to still say inside Git that there is a conflict that needs to be resolved. So it's necessary for us to not only fix the actual code problems that we have, but also make sure we remove out the associated errorness. And the errorness is going to be seen like we saw right here. Go ahead and undo that really fast where we have from equal sign down to the greater than symbol sequence. That's usually the newer bunch of code. The equal sign up to the less than sequence and head is usually the older code. Generally, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna make sure that those match up appropriately. This will often require you to actually look between this. There's a couple different views you can do to actually examine that. But in this case, because I know exactly what my error was, I wanna go ahead and take all of this out for the pound include right there, or I can simply just take that out, hit delete, go ahead and take out that line with the path that had the code that was the later commit, and then go right here inside the .h and change that to appropriate value of HPP. So we have the correct link on that file. Go ahead and save on that. Now that we've saved, if I go over into GitHub, you can see that I have that error is gonna be gone. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a lovely checkbox in that to make sure it's gonna update. I'm going to say that I fixed the error. You can see the change happened right there that I removed that comment. I have these added lines of code right there. And so I'm going to give myself a nice message saying that I fixed the conflict. Again, using full English sentences as our standard policy for that. Choose commit to master. It committed just fine. I'm going to go ahead and choose to sync that. So I'm update to regular, ready to go. That's now a full version synced and up to date. So I can go ahead and pull that back on the Mac box and we'll be totally update and ready to go. So we've got that ready to go on that. We've got that committed. And we've shown the idea of how to use GitHub Desktop not only to do a branch, how to fix an error on merge, and what to look for as we do that, and how to actually make sure we address that inside the actual code, looking for the angle brackets, equal sign, and the other angle brackets, and matching the appropriate code. Again, remember that the, from the less than up to the equal is the older code. Equal to the greater than symbol is the newer code. And so you need to update that as necessary by looking at the actual what you need to make changes on. So that requires you actually pay attention to what you did. So this is one of the main reasons why it's very important to always, every time you make a begin, you always start with the sync and end with the sync and sync often. All right, that's what we're going for today. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.